Good evening and welcome to GPAC Live, presented by the Jay and Susie Googe Performing Arts Center at Auburn University. I'm Mindy Street, the Director of Development here at the Googe Performing Arts Center. And joining me for tonight's live broadcast is my friend and colleague, Kelly Ard, the Director of Development for the College of Liberal Arts. Welcome, Kelly. We're so glad you're here with us this evening. Thank you, Mindy. I'm delighted to be here on behalf of everyone in the College of Liberal Arts. And I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the Googe Center for including the Department of Music in this first ever GPAC Live series. The last three concerts have been amazing, and I know tonight is going to be incredible as well. I'm just sad that it's coming to an end. I know, that's right. Uh, tonight is the final concert in our GPAC Live Department of Music series. Our featured artist is trumpeter Thomas Vines. And I actually had the chance to chat with Thomas last week while he was here rehearsing. So before we head into the Waltos Theater um, for tonight's first piece, let's get to know a little bit more about Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Welcome to the Googe Center. Um, I'm so glad to be here and able to catch up with you today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, I'm sure a lot of viewers already know you, uh, especially those in the music department. But if you don't mind sharing a little bit about yourself with us, please. So I'm from the Nashville area, uh, just outside uh, in a place called Brentwood, Tennessee. And I'm double majoring in music performance and civil engineering. Wonderful. So tell us why music and why Auburn? So I first started with music uh, because it's been such a big part of my life so far and I wanted to continue to pursue that in college and I chose Auburn. What ori originally brought me to Auburn was that they had such a great engineering program and so that kind of got the foot in the door and I realized they actually have a lot of great opportunities as far as music goes with several ensembles and the marching band and things like that. Uh, so I decided Auburn would be the best place for to get the best of both worlds. So what all are you involved in? So I'm in the I've been involved in the Auburn University marching band, jazz band, symphonic band, trumpet ensemble, brass quintet, and I'm involved in the Auburn Knights now too. So wow, a little bit of everything and double majoring. Um, so very busy student. Um, can you tell us about how your studies in music performance have impacted your coursework in engineering and then how has engineering affected your performance as a musician? So I would say the biggest thing about doing a double major has been time management. Um, obviously both are very strenuous degrees in, in music. There's a lot of practice involved and in engineering there's a lot of studying involved. So just being able to manage my time in a way that I can be successful in both has been one of the biggest things. Um, I'd say music has helped my engineering uh, because I've been able to come up with more creative problem or cr solutions to problems. And in music, engineering has helped uh, with more of like a technical side of the music playing. Okay. Thomas, can you tell us about your recital program tonight? What pieces are you performing and what do you most enjoy about them? So I'll be starting the program off with the uh, Tartini Trumpet Concerto. It was originally written for violin. And the whole process of learning to play on, uh, well, I've played on piccolo before, but just preparing for this recital and playing on the piccolo trumpet has been a lot of fun. Um, and then I'll be playing the Gregson Trumpet Concerto, uh, which is a long piece, um, but I've really enjoyed preparing that one as well. There's a lot of technical spots in that one. And then I'll be playing the Carmen Fantasy, uh, written for Doc Severinsen uh, by Frank Berto. And that's been a piece that I've been listening to since high school, and it's really cool to be able to perform it now. And um, then I'll be finishing my recital with two little Peskin pieces, which I think are going to be really fun. Okay. Is there anything especially challenging or difficult about these particular pieces that you'd like to share with us? I think the, the biggest thing really is going to be the endurance factor. Um, I've got a lot of music, a lot of it's pretty challenging, and it's a, an hour recital, so the, just getting through it is probably going to be the biggest challenge. All right, right. Um, well, can you also share with us how you originally got attracted to the trumpet, what drew you to it, how old you were, and how that all began? So I started getting interested in trumpet at a young age. Um, my grandfather, he played trumpet, and so that kind of uh, 
showed me, hey, I can actually play music because for a while I didn't even realize, you know, people could play music. It was just something that all those, you know, big stars were playing. But uh, my grandfather was in the Third Army Band, in the Million Dollar Band, so uh, he was always, you know, in music. And so I started in sixth grade um, in the beginner band and was not very good. <laughs> Um, but I kept practicing and practicing, and as I got better, I started to enjoy it more and more. And um, now here we are, getting a major in music. <laughs> right, right. So I'm sure your grandfather then is one of your favorite trumpet players, but do you have anyone else that you um, look up to or that's your favorite? Um, so some big trumpet players that I listen to a lot are uh, Alan Vizzuti. Uh, I admire a lot of his technical playing. Um, Doc Severinsen. Um, Wayne Bergeron, Chet Baker, uh, people like that. Okay. So um, many of you may not know, but Thomas's original recital was scheduled for spring of 2020, but was postponed due to the pandemic. But because of that, that's why we are here this evening. And so I'd love to know, what does it mean for you to have the opportunity to perform tonight on the Marenta stage in the Gooch Center? Well, first of all, it's a huge honor to give the, be given this opportunity to play here. I mean, it's such a beautiful building, and I always have loved coming here for the concert since it's opened up. So, And when they first told me that I was going to be playing here, I didn't believe them because, I mean, this place is uh, really, really something. Um, but since then, I've, I've had a couple rehearsals here, and I just love it. It sounds great. Great. Well, we're very honored to have you, too. And, and also the faculty showcase and the other, the other two students that we've been able to reschedule their spring performances. So we're very honored and glad to have you as well. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, I'd also love to ask you another question that I'm sure you're asked quite often these days as graduation draws nearer for you. But what are your plans after Auburn? And do you think you'll continue to pursue music? I'll definitely be pursuing music after college. Um, right now I'm looking into different engineering places that I can start working at and uh, hopefully find a career in civil engineering. Um, but I would love to keep playing music. I'd love to find some gigs, find a local jazz band that I can play in and maybe do some recording work if possible. You know, keep, keep uh, uh, pursuing my passion in music. Great, great. Well, whatever company gets you, they're going to be very lucky, and we're very lucky to have you here tonight. So thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you.
Once again, welcome to GPAC Live. If you're just joining us, I'm Mindy Street, the Director of Development here at the Googe Center. And here with me is Kelly Ard, the Director of Development at the College of Liberal Arts. And we are bringing you an amazing performance by Auburn music and engineering student, Thomas Vines. So Kelly, something as some of our viewers may not know about our work here at the Googe Center is that we are anchored not only by the commitment to our community, but also to the students of the College of Liberal Arts and the rest of Auburn University. And one of our closest and most rewarding partnerships to date has been with the College of Liberal Arts. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks to our partnership with the Googe Center, our students have had the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with touring artists and performing arts professionals. And like tonight, they even have the opportunity to perform in a world-class facility. These opportunities provide unprecedented experiential learning opportunities that truly set our students apart from their peers at other institutions. Yes, we've hosted numerous concerts with the Department of Music at the Googe Center and including tonight's performance, three student recitals as part of our GPAC Live. And we had actually planned to host theater students on our stage for a production of Ragtime in spring 2021, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, this production has been postponed um, so Kelly, can you share a little bit about the theater's plans for this fall and maybe any special projects that are in the works? Absolutely. So despite the limitations brought by physical distancing, um, the, the work of our students has continued. They have, they have not ceased to continue their hard work. Like the Goosh Center, the theater department has successfully pivoted from onstage performances to virtual performances. This fall, you can experience the Auburn University Theater in the comfort of your own home. For more information about this fall season, please visit cla.auburn.edu slash theater. Great, Kelly. I know we are really looking forward to seeing some of the performances this fall and those to come throughout the year. And speaking of wonderful performances, let's head back into the Waltos Theater on the Marenta stage, where tonight's recital by Thomas Vines continues. We're going to break for a brief intermission following this next piece, but be sure to stick around for some exciting GPAC Live announcements.
Thank you.
Good evening, and welcome to GPAC Live at the Jay and Susie Gouge Performing Arts Center at Auburn University. I'm Amy Miller, Director of Programming and Education here at GPAC, and I'm joined by my colleague, Jonathan Osborne, Director of Marketing and Communications. Hey, Amy, how are you? I'm doing well. You? Really enjoying Thomas's performance tonight. I know, it's been great. And I have to say, I'm right here with Mindy and Kelly. I'm kind of sad that this, this is ending. I don't know what we're going to do on Tuesday nights now. I know, Tuesdays in September. We have I a know. few others. We have a few other music department shows coming later in the semester in October. But these recitals and the faculty showcase this September has just been I know, magical. and I can't think of a better way for the Goose Center to have launched this new GPAC Live program than with our very own Department of Music. This has been phenomenal. Absolutely. We've had such a great time welcoming the talented students, the phenomenal faculty. It's it's just been it's been wonderful. It's been a fun way to lift us all up during these these odd and epic times that we're in. Um, I have a big smile on my face. You I know you can't tell with tell the mask, but yes, we're both we're both smiling <laughs> we're both for sure. Smiling, and we're so happy and proud of our music students and our colleagues. So thank you all to the music department. Definitely. So if you have not viewed some of our uh, Department of Music Series performances, just to give you an overview, the Department of Music Series consisted of four live streams that were all broadcast directly from the Walto Theater. That's three student recitals, including tonight's performance and last week's stellar fall faculty showcase. Yeah, they were phenomenal indeed. That's great. a great word. So talented. It really shows off our musical talents on really. this campus. What, what was your favorite part of the September shows? You know, I have to say, I'm looking on the screen right now, I, I have to say the interviews that, that we conducted as each part of the performance. I love, I love hearing the music and seeing the artists perform, but I really like getting some of the backstory from them and, you know, learning a little bit more about them. And with our faculty, I think learning more about some of the new programs that are coming out, some of the new initiatives, if it's the All Steinway initiative if it's our new faculty band i had no idea that we had a faculty band and they are amazing so yeah they're new on the scene yeah all the new Auburn. all the great things that you can learn so i love that absolutely i love this footage too catching up with megan castaneda on clarinet this is cassidy powell on saxophone a couple of weeks ago and then we had the faculty showcase all faculty showcase and there were course. several faculty members that performed um, as part of that and again like as i was saying educating us on new programs and new initiatives that are coming up. It's really exciting to see those come come to fruition. Yeah, true form to Auburn University. The music department is doing so many phenomenal things, Definitely. wonderful new initiatives. We're really impressed with so all the So I have to ask you, doing. though, what was your favorite part? Of my favorite? I think the student recitals. I was blown away. I was, I was a music major myself back in the, the undergrad day, and just having the opportunity to see them showcase their incredible talents. These students are going places if they want to musically. They are. They really, really are. And I do have to say bravo, bravo, bravo again to our three featured student artists, to Megan Castaneda, to Cassidy Powell, and tonight's performance by Thomas Vines. Um, they all delivered such incredible performances, and I have to say that if they are any indication of the talent that we have in our Department of Music, then we are lucky to have them here at Auburn University. Indeed. So wonderful. And what a great chance to be able to showcase them during these COVID times. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Amy, that was an overview of GPAC Live, the Department of Music series, but I know that you have some pretty big news to, to share with us tonight about where GPAC Live is going in the future. We do. I have another big smile on my face because we've all been working hard to announce this new series, yeah. right? Are we ready? Let's do it. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we are kicking off our GPAC Live Alabama Artist Series. We have three artists from across the state of Alabama showcasing their vibrant talents. Um, they will be performing on our stage, just like this last month of performances by the music department. These three artists will be on our stage, we'll be streaming them live, and as it says right here, our first performance of the three will be Thursday, October 29th with the incredible, renowned John Paul White. So he is a phenomenal artist based up in Florence Muscle Shoals, the northwest corner of our vibrant state. And, you know, John Paul, there, there's not many voices and talents in our field and our, uh, around our globe like his. And we get to call him our very own in Alabama. And he's going to come down. He's going to be working with some of our students uh, across the community. But, you know, 
John Paul, he's known for his two-decade career. He was based in Nashville for two decades, really established himself as a phenomenal singer-songwriter, incredible vocalist, wonderful guitarist. And then he joined the famous duo, um, The Civil Wars, which many of us know and really beloved singing, songwriting um, voices as well. And he was in that project um, for about a decade. And then in 2016, he went back into his solo career, released his album, Bula, which beautiful songs. And then most recently, he just within the last year released the Hurting Kind, which is his new album. And those came out from Single Lock Records. He's a co-founder of that record label up in Florence Muscle Shoals. And so he has toured quite a bit with other Single Lock record artists. He's toured the globe. Um, he's worked to educate students and, and people as he goes. And just to tell his stories about his love um, for the South and his roots down here, but also um, some of the tumultuous natures of, of his learnings here in Alabama. And we're lucky to have him. That's October the 29th, October correct? the 29th, awesome. yeah, 7.30. Next? Our next performer on that is our very own Alabama native, Ellie Dewey. So she hails from the Mobile area in Dauphin Island. Uh, she is an incredible young musician who has massively hit the scene. If you all know, since 2016, she has Happy Now, a new single um, with DJ producer Zed. I was just looking today, there are 90 million views of that song on YouTube. It's a complete hit. Her talent goes far and wide. She's toured the globe with Zed and, and other um, performances. Um, and she comes from a, a family of musicians with New Orleans ties. So she grew up between Mississippi, Dauphin Island, and a little bit of New Orleans. So we're excited to call her our own in Alabama as well. Um, she's collaborated with Taro, Cool, and Dre. Um, and she'll also be working with some of our students and community members. So excited. Yeah, a young, very popular artist. So we're thrilled. That one is also a Thursday, 7.30. Um, and that's November 19th. Yeah. All right, and then on to our third artist. We're really excited to announce Eric Essex on December 3rd, also a Thursday at 7.30. If you all are not familiar with Eric Essex, he is a renowned uh, contemporary jazz guitarist based in Birmingham, and he has a three-decade career. He's just released his 25th album, believe it or not. It is called Songs from the Deep. Beautiful songs that really um, celebrate his his history, his journey through the 25 albums that he's released, his roots in Birmingham. He's celebrated songs of the civil rights. He's, you know, really talked about the journey that Birmingham and our state of Alabama has come through over the last three decades. He's lived it himself. So we're excited. He's going to be working with a phenomenal group of artists that will be coming. He'll be bringing a band, the Eric Essex Group, to our stage and they include some phenomenal artists out of Atlanta and out of Birmingham um, and they will be also performing holiday oh, music. I was about to ask, it's yeah, December yeah. 3rd so we're creeping yes. up on the holidays. Yes, so right? that'll be our fun holiday show as well. So get ready for that, yeah. Oh. And all three of these artists will be taking part in residencies, meaning they will be doing advanced engagements. We have master classes planned with all three of them to educate our music students here at Auburn. We have K-12 streamed performances. So we're going to be connecting with our, our K-12 audiences to stream these artists, these three, to their school, their classrooms. And then we also have Talk Back Thursdays they'll be engaging in. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit about our Talk Back yeah, Thursday? Well, you've, you've actually hosted a few of them. Yeah. So um, our Talk Back Thursday series, they are um, scheduled usually every other Thursday. Sometimes we have to skip around on a couple of days. but. Um, it's just a chance for us to have a quick online conversation with some of the artists who we're working with who might be coming to the Goosh Center, um, maybe folks that we work with in the past or arts leaders, uh, different university leaders, just a chance for us really to get to talk about the, the landscape of the arts at Auburn in our state and, and really around the world. Yeah, it's one of those silver lining programs I think that has come out of these times that we're really able to focus on Thursdays, take a take a minute, have Definitely. lunch and, and talk, you know, sit and back watch. and listen and watch. Yeah. It's Facebook Live or YouTube, so it's 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 an easy, easy watch. Great Absolutely. break to the day. Yeah. So we're excited about our GPAC Live series with the I Alabama artists. I know this is artists. so exciting to have another great series. Yeah, yeah, up. it's going to be fun. 
And it's so important, which, which I meant to say earlier, but it is so important that we celebrate our local, our Alabama, our state and regional artists. We have a strong, vibrant, talented state. And they're from all across they're the They're all state. across, from the northwest corner all the way down to Dolphin Island. That's amazing. Yeah, and so we're going to plan to lift up Alabama and our state as well as these artists and the students here at Auburn. And can you tell our audience a bit yeah, about course, how to course. register and how that works? So all GPEC Live uh, performances are free to view with registration. So you can go to our website, which is googecentertickets.auburn. Um, .auburn.edu, again, googecentertickets.auburn.edu. Select the performance that you're interested in. You can register for it. And not just these performances, but of course, you can check out all of our other performances as well. We have a few coming up with the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, um, also in October and in November. But um, any of our performances that are upcoming, you can register for them there. Wonderful. So since we can't have you all in our theater, we're going to still celebrate the beautiful acoustics of this space with these artists and stream these shows out to you. And we want to hear from you as well. Let us know what you think about these shows coming, um, what and you're I, enjoying. I do want to say that when we say GPAC Live, that we do mean live. So these are all performances that are produced in-house. There, as you can see on the screen, we've got our... Yeah. Control room, our production team that's working hard behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, these are all original productions that we're producing here um, at the Goose Center, and so we're we're thrilled, delighted, privileged to be able to share these share these with you. And on behalf of everyone at the Goose Center, just want to thank you guys for your continued support for programs like GPEC Live, Talk Back Thursday, and everything else that we're doing uh, to connect with and share the arts during this time. Absolutely, we have to stay connected in whatever we, way we can during yes. this time. So. We hope this helps. You can crack open those bottles of wine. You can make <laughs> that dinner while you watch our shows. You can sit back and relax, but hopefully you still feel like you're in tune with this community here. Have at a Food good Center. evening and enjoy yeah. the arts, yes. All right, well, that's about enough of us. So we're right. going to continue with our intermission before we head on back into the theater for the rest of Thomas's recital. Yeah, and, and uh, we hope you enjoy Thomas Vines. Well, as you can see, our Department of Music students are incredible. They're truly talented and incredibly hardworking, and that goes for our faculty as well. Our faculty teach and study on stage in recital halls and in practice rooms. If they were scientists, those would be their laboratories. Having the right space with the very best equipment available is crucial to ensuring that our music students have the very best educational experience while they're here at Auburn. With this said, the College of Liberal Arts seeks to become an all Steinway school, which we are extremely excited about. This initiative will ensure that we can outfit our college's facilities with Steinway pianos to provide students with the best in-class instruments and ensure high quality equipment for our prestigious faculty. Yes, and Kelly, on that note, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Rhonda and Ike Scott for their support of this important initiative. And through their generosity, the Scots also made it possible for us to purchase the beautiful Barbara Woodward Haley Steinway Grand Piano that you see on our stage tonight. We are so grateful to the Scott family as well. 
and so their support and any support for this initiative truly has a larger impact across our campus. It elevates the arts experience for our audiences who have the opportunity to enjoy the performances and most importantly, it enriches our educational experience for our students. With that said, let's continue with this evening's recital.
as you can tell, both Kelly and I are very passionate about the arts and the impact it has on Auburn, our community, and the state of Alabama. And when our doors open again, we hope you'll join us and fill our seats in the Waltos Theater. But until then, there's actually a unique and memorable way that you can be here at the Gouge Center even while the doors are still closed. 900 of our 1,200 seats in the Waltos Theater are available for naming. Through a gift of $2,000, you can customize a seat plaque that will forever connect you to this landmark venue and serve as a lasting testament to your support for the transformative power of the arts. To learn more about naming a seat, please contact our office at 334-844-7945. And now, here's more from our featured artist, Thomas Vines. Once again, what a spectacular performance. Mindy, as you know, we are currently in collaboration with the Goose Center around making plans to advance our existing recording studio in the Department of Music, which will allow our programs to capture a variety of performances and the true talent of these students. 
Yes, we are so excited about this potential partnership with the College of Liberal Arts, Kelly, and we are also excited that football season is finally upon us. And although this season for us at the Googe Center, for our theater students, and our football season looks a little different this year, we're still as competitive as ever, and even the arts are getting involved. So in case you haven't heard, um, yesterday Auburn kicked off the Beat Week Giving Challenge against the University of Georgia. This one week giving challenge leads up to Saturday's game in Athens, and it's a head-to-head -head challenge across both universities. And you can actually help us beat Georgia by giving to support the arts at Auburn University. All Beat Week gifts made to the Googe Center will support our newly launched intermission fund. This fund will help us continue our mission to celebrate and share the arts with innovative virtual engagement opportunities for audiences across the university, our school systems, community, and beyond until we're able to reunite in person again. And we're excited to participate in this year's Beat Week Giving Challenge too. If you're proud to be a College of Liberal Arts graduate and proud of our college, we invite you to show your support by giving to the College of Liberal Arts and help us beat Georgia. I mean, we'll beat them any way we can, so <laughs> right. help us do that. Right. The university with the most individual gifts of $5 or more will be declared the Beat Week Giving Challenge winner. Want to show your support to the Googe Center, please visit aub.ie forward slash gpac dash beatweek and then to support the College of Liberal Arts you can visit aub.ie forward slash cla dash beatweek. So Mindy I have to ask can you make a gift to both organizations? Um, of course you can. You can give to the Googe Center, you can give to the College of Liberal Arts, and you can give to all other departments participating in this Beat Week Giving Challenge. The more, the better. Um, and remember, you have until the game clock hits zero on Saturday night. And hopefully that ends with a big win. Yes. <laughs> if there's one thing the Auburn family knows, it's how to show team spirit. So we're going to beat Georgia. I know it. War Eagle. War Eagle. Well, we're coming to the end of tonight's recital with our final piece for this evening. Here, once again, live from the Marenta stage, is Thomas Vines.
applause for that spectacular performance. And thank you, Kelly, so much for being here this evening. This has been so much fun um, to watch Thomas and be here um, this evening. And a very special thank you again to our faculty and students who participated in our GPAC Live Music Department um, series here at the Googe Center this past month and to Megan Castaneda, Cassidy Powell, and Thomas Vines, and to all of the faculty members who performed in the Fall Faculty Showcase. Bravo. And um, lastly, I just want to remind everyone that we have many, many more exciting virtual performances and programs in store for you. Our upcoming Chamber Music Society's Front Row and GPAC Live concerts are all free to view with registration. All you have to do is go on our website and register. To learn more about performances, events, and virtual engagements, please visit our website at googecentertickets.auburn.edu. Again, that's googecentertickets.auburn.edu. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, and have a wonderful night. Good night.